Doctor Strange has arrived at the set of Spider-Man 3 in Atlanta. The Green Lantern series is going to introduce a brand new lantern, and The Walking Dead added a really cool new actress to its cast. What's up, Comic Book Nation? BD here after a totally calm, normal, uneventful, and in no way anxiety-inducing week in America, right? Nothing really big happened. Oh, there was that one thing, a very important decision that shaped all of your lives for the years to come. You had to vote, and you picked the right candidate. 68% voted for me on my Instagram story. I defeated Chris Killian as the best host at comicbook.com. Hey! And like all polls, there is no more debate, and that is final. But don't you worry, I looked through those votes, and the 32% of you who picked CK, I'm looking at you, Sergio, Josh, and my own ex-girlfriend, Jessica. I'll remember that when my 100,000 follower giveaway gets here. Uh-huh. Anyway, let's get to the news. I love gold! Eternals would have come out this weekend in a much better timeline than the one we're living in. And in the second timeline, Black Widow would have come out this weekend, but instead, the world can't follow the rules, wear masks, or wash their hands, so here we are, not even Free Guy can come out on December 11th anymore. But the future is looking good. I mean, scientists literally found radio waves that could be from alien technology in our galaxy this week. That's a real story. So maybe whatever Chris Killian is doing up in that space station is working. Begin laser ignition sequence. Doctor Strange himself has arrived on the set of Spider-Man 3 in Atlanta, that's what I'm hearing. But don't expect to see much of this, as most of all of that production, at least for now, is taking place in a private studio, where even the most talented photographers couldn't make J. Jonah Jameson happy with a picture of Spider-Man. Cumberbatch is going to film some scenes with Tom Holland and whoever else he might be with on set. I honestly don't know that much about it. And then head back to London, where the cast and crew of Doctor Strange and the Multiverse of Madness are getting ready to shoot. I'm off to London, England. On the DC side, the Green Lantern series on HBO Max has been revealed to be casting a black woman as a brand new lantern, an original character, who will be a main character on the series. And if you're mad about this, just shut the f up. I mean, seriously, we're getting Guy Gardner, Simon Baz, Alan Scott, Jessica Cruz, more. But you're mad at a character codenamed Bree Jarda, and that's gonna disrupt your little purist approach to comics on television and movies or whatever other stupid reason you might be mad? No, we don't have room for that here. Let's wait and see the series before we preemptively decide to hate it for literally no good reason. Okay, Pumpkin? Right. Elsewhere in DC, I think John Cleese is teasing a role in Zack Snyder's Justice League, sharing a photo from some sort of trailer where he's got a few key DC comic books that are probably being used as prep for a William Wintergreen role, AKA Deathstroke's version of Alfred, AKA Awesome. And we know Deathstroke's there, so this makes sense. Snyder just keeps adding characters to this thing, and I couldn't be more down for that. I did get hit with a very interesting theory in my DMs this week, following the passing of legendary actor Sean Connery, that Snyder might've actually had Connery in this part once upon a time. It's nice to think about, but no way to confirm or deny. Snyder posted a photo of the late actor on Vero, and it's very rare for Snyder to do that with actors he hasn't worked with. It's an interesting thought, and it's truly devastating to have lost Connery. I mean, that man was an iconic James Bond, an overall tremendously talented human being, and him and his family are in all of our thoughts. Sean Connery's portrayal of James Bond is obviously the inspiration for Austin Powers. Yes. No James Bond, no Austin Powers. No Austin Powers, no private jet for me. Despite this week seeing social media and news being loaded with exhausting debates and arguments, I did manage to squeak one exciting exclusive bit of news out into the world as The Walking Dead has found its Lucille, not the bat, the woman. Negan actor Jeffrey Dean Morgan will be acting with his real life wife, Hilary Burton, in a flashback episode coming in the six bonus episodes early next year. I mean, love or hate this show, I personally enjoy it quite a bit, but that's literally couple goals. How does it get any better than that? That said, Let's hope their real life goes nothing like what we're gonna see from Negan and Lucille if it follows the comics. <laughs> <laughs> Remember Solo, a Star Wars story? Yeah, well, me either. Well, director Ron Howard thinks that a sequel is still a possibility. In a recent interview, he said there is interest in the movie's characters and the gangster world from the fans, so he thinks the positive fan love over time could result in a sequel coming at some point, so... Cool. Throw me a frickin' bone here. Speaking of sequels that might happen, well, Brandon Routh 
Doesn't seem to be a part of any of those. He explained during Middle East's virtual Speedy Comics Con that Superman Returns never returned because Warner Brothers wasn't happy with its box office, but he says a sequel isn't impossible at this point. And he also shattered the dreams and hopes for a Scott Pilgrim vs. The World sequel. Like pretty much all of us, he doesn't think it's gonna happen, but he would be on board if it did. It's so weird to me how some of these movies are box office disappointments, or however generously you want to phrase it, and then suddenly, years later, everyone claims they want a sequel. If you just supported the movie when it was in theaters, big time, you would have got the sequel! Having said that, I do have some thoughts. If we make it to this time next week, I'll have an Xbox Series X and a PlayStation 5 right here in my house. So maybe if you want to see unboxings, let me know in the comments, and... Maybe I'll throw a Miles Morales live stream up on Wednesday, because we're allowed to do that. That sounds like fun. No spoilers for this week's Mandalorian episode yet, but as you will see each week on Second Printing going forward, we have a very special guest giving a detailed review of last week's episode, and honestly, it's the only review that matters. Exceptional. Thanks, Mom. Huge insight. That's your second printing of the week's biggest issues at comicbook.com. If you want to talk more, hit me up on Instagram, at Brandon Davis BD. And if you're watching this video on YouTube, be sure to like this video and subscribe to our channel. For more updates, head over to comicbook.com. I'm BD. I'll see you there.